is the February 4th, 2019 Board of Control meeting, which will be more exciting than the Super Bowl. <laughs> so, uh, Clerk, will you please call the roll? Good morning, everyone. Calling the roll for the Monday, February 4th, Board of Control meeting. It is now 11.03 a.m. We have Nan Baker. Here. Dale Miller. Here. Trevor Mackler serving as an alternate for Dan Brady. Here. Mike Chambers serving as an alternate for Mike Dever. Here. Dennis Kennedy serving as an alternate for Armin Dudish. Here. And Lenora Lockett. Here. We have a quorum. Okay, thank you. Um, at this point in time, we'll take a look at the Board of Control minutes from the meeting of January 28th. If anybody has any corrections or comments on those minutes. Hearing none, I will make a motion to approve the minutes. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor of approval of the minutes indicate by saying aye. aye. Anyone opposed? Uh, the Board of Control minutes are approved. Is there any public comment? No public comment at this time. Any tabled items? And no tabled items. Okay, so we will move on for new items. Yes, new items, item number BC 2019-86, Department of Development, recommending a business growth loan to Trevez LLC in the amount of $240,000 for the purchase of machinery and manufacturing equipment to insource additional production and expand machining capabilities. And it's for a project located at 24 to 40 Rockwell Road, Euclid. Good morning, I'm here to present the proposed loan to Trevez LLC. Uh, the company is seeking a $240,000 business growth loan to acquire manufacturing equipment. Uh, the company recently broke ground on a 12,000 square foot expansion to its magnesium foundry in Euclid, Ohio. Uh, this will enable them to, to diversify their product offerings into the aerospace markets. Uh, with this expansion, the company is committed to creating 10 jobs in Cuyahoga County over three years. Uh, the projected uh, annual payroll in year three uh, is expected to be 2130000 which would be an increase of 480000 over their current payroll. Uh, the estimated annual tax benefit from the project is $60,000. Uh, the proposed county loan will be seven years at an interest rate of 3.25%. It will be secured by a second uh, priority position lien on the machinery and equipment along with a personal guarantee of um, Andy Sherman. The uh, Fifth Third Bank is the primary lender of, of the, the, the total project cost is 600,000 and um, and the borrower is um, providing a 10% equity for the project. Uh, the Department of Development believes that providing financial assistance to Turvis LLC will leverage additional investment, create and retain jobs, and increase income and property taxes for our community. Therefore, we recommend approval of the business growth loan to Turvis LLC. Mr. Plato, could you please um, introduce yourself? Oh, hi, I'm Bob Plato. <laughs> okay, any questions on this item? Mr. McAleer? Bob, is the city of Euclid putting any money towards this project? Um, no, not part, of, not this project. No. And then, uh, I know this was approved some time ago by the CCI. Uh, what was there anything that caused the delay of getting it to the board of control? Uh, there is an affiliated company, Metrofreight. Um, the company has been sold. Uh, however, we are showing on our books that there was a tax due balance. Uh, so we worked with the company uh, that agreed to ensure that loan was paid off before closing on this loan. Okay. Any other questions? Councilwoman Baker? Uh, yes. Will this be billed monthly? Will we be actually sending out invoices? Mm -hmm. That so we're not expecting a, them just to pay? We're expected a month, yeah, them to pay monthly with the invoices. And, okay, we will send them an invoice and they will pay from that? Yes. If I had another, um, the funding source, Western Reserve Fund. Yes. I guess, what is what is that? Or? The Job Creation Fund. Job it's Creation the same, Fund. AKA the Job Creation Fund. Okay. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Bob, I know I talked to Greg Huth. Do we, does this company have another loan currently? 
actually had a they had another loan, an NCO loan that was paid off uh, two years ago. So it's completely yeah, it's completely paid, off. paid off. Okay. Any other questions from anybody? Hearing none, I will move to approve the item. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Miller. All those in favor of approval indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The item is approved. Thank you. Next item, BC 2019-87, Department of Workforce Development in partnership with the City of Cleveland, Cuyahoga County Workforce Development Board, submitting an amendment to a contract with Towards Employment, Inc. for job seeker services for applicants with felony backgrounds. And it's for the period July 1st, 2016 through June 30th, 2019 for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $70,000. Good morning, Frank Brickner from the Department of Workforce Development. We're seeking approval of a contract amendment to increase by $70,000. This was competitively procured <coughs> and the procurement went through June 30th, 2019. We're using federal WIOA funds. The additional dollars will allow us to expand WIOA services into the um, Euclid Jail for individuals ready for pre-release. Um, we will be able to serve an additional 35 individuals with the goal that half of them will be will find employment after they're released. Thank you. Any questions on this item? Seeing none, I will uh, move to approve the item. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Miller. All those in favor of approval indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The item is approved. Thank you. Next item, BC 2019-88, Fiscal Office, Office of the Treasurer, submitting an amendment to a contract with Meter Public Funds, Inc. for investment advisor services for the period January 1st, 2017 through December 31st, 2018 to extend the time period to December 31st, 2020 to expand the scope of services by authorizing the advisor to execute investment transactions on a discretionary basis and adding trust fund accounts to the accounts advised by the advisor effective January 1st, 2019, and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $270,000. Good morning, Christopher Murray, County Treasurer. Uh, I'm presenting to you today a renewal of our agreement with our current investment advisor, Meteor and Associates. Uh, the agreement will has a couple of changes uh, that I'll highlight. The first is the we're adding the ability for the for Meteor uh, to invest our, uh, make our investments on a discretionary basis, which means in essence that they will direct uh, the investment decisions subject to my approval. And they will also, uh, we're also adding to the portfolio an additional uh, $210 million of trust fund uh, accounts. And the trust fund accounts would be those, those, uh, those accounts where we have uh, the debt We've, we've got the debt parked uh, for some of our major county projects, uh, such as the county hotel and any other large, uh, large county capital improvements. The agreement was, was competitively bid. Uh, the agreement that just expired uh, in December uh, gives us the ability to renew, to, uh, we have actually two renewal periods, which I'm taking advantage of now. The actual increase uh, will be uh, $50,000 on an annual basis from the current contract. And again, that is to cover uh, the direction of the investments as well as adding additional dollars to the portfolio. I'll take any questions. Any questions on this item? Councilwoman Baker. Is there a reason why um, we wouldn't have come before the end of the year <coughs> knowing that the contract's ended and still waiting until <coughs> after it expires? Yes, Council, but we actually, I actually had the, I had the agreement uh, prepared uh, in the fourth quarter, um, but I take it to, you know, to doing a, fat, a final review, I actually realized that the, uh, without adding the language for the trust accounts, I technically could not have directed um, our advisors to help us with, with those. And so I made the, made the decision that we better get, we better get this in there. So it, was it planned then to wait until after the end of the year before bringing this to us, or was no, it? No, it was not. Was it was not, and it was it was it was submitted um, in the fourth quarter of uh, 20, 2018. Okay. 
And just to follow, so uh, does this contract, the second renewal, begin February 1st, or when does the, when would the? The contract, the, the renewal, as it's, it's January, uh, January 1 through uh, December 31st of 2020. But at this point, uh, we've, we've not transacted any business until, until we got the, the agreement okay. approved. Thank you. Any other councilman? Does what we're doing here exhaust the renewals available, or is there an additional one after after 2020? There is an additional after 2020. For yes. How long? Another two years. Okay. Based on the current agreement. And uh, are we planning? to replace Joe Ferris, or does the expansion of this contract replace the work that he would have done? It would not replace the work that he, that he, would, do, that he would do. Um, we're still gonna need some, I still need someone to manage, manage the advisors, as well as uh, there's a host of accounting functions that, are, that we're responsible for on, on a daily basis, as well as I need a lead for ERP. So there's, there's no way we would, we would not replace that position. So, uh, the expansion of this contract really has nothing to do with his departure, is that correct? The direction, formally adding the, the direction of the, of the investments uh, is, is something that I contemplated even before Mr. Ferris departed, yes. Now, uh, this contract costs $135,000 per year on an annual basis, is that correct? That is correct. Uh, I know that uh, we're not investing in, we're not investing in stocks and other speculative investments, that's just not allowed. Correct. Uh, we're, uh, we're investing in, in relatively uh, short-term debt instruments that have uh, uh, relatively modest uh, variations in their value. I'm having a hard time understanding what decisions they would make on our behalf that would amount to $135,000 that, that we would to benefit over the course of the year as opposed to not using an advisory service and, or, or using it only in a very limited capacity and doing most of it ourselves. Well, Councilman, I can, I can tell you that the, the, discretionary account, the discretionary account status is what the majority of treasurers are using throughout the state of Ohio, including our, our, our major uh, major counterpoints. Um, there's there's no way for, there's no way to for for me uh, to to be able to stay in tune with what's happening to the market on a daily basis without having uh, this either this contract constituted as 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 I am presenting to you or having an investment manager that's gonna, that's going to d direct all of that. What this contract will allow me to do is perhaps, and I'm saying perhaps, save uh, save dollars on the annual compensation of Joe Ferris's replacement because they're not going to have to uh, direct the investments. There, they will be more of a cash uh, cash accounting manager. And. Uh, would there be anything to be said for for managing the investments by hiring somebody to do so as, as opposed to doing it by contract where there's usually markups and overhead involved? Well, at, at this point, the $135,000 that, that Meter is charging us is about $15,000 less than what they're charging to rank county. So to some degree, uh, the the savings are baked into the into this particular uh, into this particular agreement. The only thing that we can, the only other option we, we would have 
would be to uh, bring in an investment manager that's going to uh, that's going to direct the investments themselves. But that usually means uh, a higher salary than what the county uh, currently offers. Okay. Mr. Mackler. Chris Shad. <clears throat> Do you have any projections on how much uh, we plan to benefit from them uh, now at the opening of 200? Plus million in the trust accounts. I mean, it seems like we should get a. I do not. I, it's a great question. I do not have that yet. Um, the the reason why we are we're going in, in this direction is uh, we know from from past experience and and I I know from past experience and through my conversations with the office of budget and management the the banks that we have our investments our uh, debt our, our trust account uh, dollars and now they're essentially minimal investments. So even if I'm just putting it into Star Ohio, that's I'm I'm easily 150 basis points better than what we would current what we, what we would be getting if I didn't if I didn't move move those dollars into something a little better because the market right now is is just advantageous for us to go uh, short term uh, primarily on commercial paper, which the banks wouldn't which the banks would not do. If you put some numbers together, just the, the benefits could be still greater. Just you bet. Yeah, you I bet. appreciate that. A good point in discussing the mm -hmm. that they had at the time of that. Any other questions? And just, uh, Chris, this this did get discussed at the last investment committee meeting, correct? Yes, this is, this is expected. This is expected to be passed. After that yes. position was vacated? Correct. Correct. It's the the strategic direction was discussed. That's, that's a fair point, Dennis. Thanks for reminding me. This uh, the strategic direction we're going in now was discussed at the IAC meeting, and it was basically agreed upon that this would be the that is correct route to pursue. That is correct. And also at that meeting, could you maybe just recap what the success has been recently in terms of investment earnings and. Oh, to sure. Councilman Miller's question about what we receive in return for the advisory services. Sure. At just this year alone, uh, the projection at the beginning of the year for investment earnings was we have about twelve million. Uh, we ended the year at sixteen. Now that's a combination of things that occurred. Uh, we changed the portfolio. We we reengineered the portfolio uh, in twenty eighteen. Uh, by uh, selling off some of our older investments at, uh, that were invested at uh, lower rates, and then we reinvested those into commercial paper. Commercial, commercial paper right now is uh, over, two, over 200 basis points, which is great for us. It allows us to keep the portfolio short, and we're not, we're not tying ourselves into, uh, into three- and five-year uh, spaces where right now they just can't compete with what we can do short-term. And we did discuss at that meeting for the board's uh, interest the, the fact that by doing this, we, we eliminate a couple of issues relative to a position. Number one, as Chris said, um, and I did do some research myself, it's pretty hard to get somebody to be an investment manager for a portfolio of over a billion dollars um, for the salary that the county had appropriated. I talked to a number of people who I thought would be um, good candidates to do that, but uh, they did not want to take whatever salary reduction. The other issue is that you avoid any issues when um, somebody who is handling the investments internally is what we did before. If that person's sick, if they go on vacation, if they do whatever, um, if the authority rests solely in the county without our ability to, to use um, an outside entity to make these placements, that could cause some hiccups in terms of what we're allowed to do. So that was another item that was discussed at the, at the investment committee meeting. So any other questions or comments? One more. Councilman Miller. Could you say a little bit more about what these $200 million in trust funds consist of? Sure. This would be... Um, this would be everything from the uh, 
gateway, the gateway uh, bond issuance, it's, it's the county hotel issuance, medical mart. I didn't bring a, I didn't bring a list of them. Um, so are these I'm sure I'm missing, I'm missing some of the major ones, but these it's cash assets. No, no, no. This is the when you once you once you, once you issue the debt, we receive the cash, and, and then the cash sits there until an obligation has to be paid out per the trust agreement. Well, that money's sitting in a bank right now. So you're at, investing at that very period. little, right? At very little. That's that money. Correct. Until it's needed. Correct. Okay. And what it could what it could help you do potentially is if we are earning more in those accounts, it may be able to allow us to roll back some of our some of our out-of-pocket debt expenses. Okay, fine. Okay, any other questions or comments? Uh, hearing none, I will make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second, second by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor of approval indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The item is approved, thank you. Next item, BC 2019-89, Fiscal Office, Office of the Treasurer, submitting an amendment to a contract with f and &E Check Protector Company, doing business as f and &E Payment Pros for licensing, support, training, and maintenance services on the digital remittance <coughs> processing system, and is for the period October 1st, 2014 through September 30th, 2019, for and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $1,565. Hello, my name is Sharnice Wilson with the Treasury Office, and I'm presenting the um, the contract amendment. And it's the additional funds are to basically upgrade from our standard licensing to our premier licensing. Um, we recently renewed in October, and since then our remittance system has crashed, and the company um, couldn't do the maintenance services and support with the standard package, and so we had to upgrade to premier. Thank you. Any questions on this item? Hearing none, I will make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second by Councilman Miller. All those in favor of approval indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The item is approved. Next item, BC 2019-90, Fiscal Office, Board of Revision, submitting an amendment to a contract with Sadler Kneecap Financial Services, Inc., doing business as ProWare for modification, maintenance, and support services on the Civil Criminal Justice Information System, Electronic Filing System, and it's for the period January 19th, 2018 through December 31st, 2018, to extend the time period to December 31st, 2020, and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $4,300. Good morning, Shelley Davis with the Board of Revision. We currently have a contract with ProWare, which piggybacked off of the contract with the Clerk of Courts. This provides for us to electronically file all the motions and uh, orders for our expedited foreclosures that come through the Board of Revision. Since this is piggybacked off the Clerk of Courts, contract, ProWare would like us to be on the same payment cycle and the same maintenance cycle. Therefore, we are amending the contract to be on their two-year maintenance cycle for a total of $4,300. Thank you. Are there any questions on this? Hearing none, I will make a motion to approve the item. Is there a second? Second, second by Councilman Miller. All those in favor of approval indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The item is approved. Thank you. Thanks, Shelley. Next item, BC 2019-91, Department of Public Safety and Justice Services, recommending an award on requisition 43423 to CSI Industries, Inc., doing business as CSI Jewett in the amount of $94,114 for the purchase of one body storage rack system for the medical examiner's body storage project. Jeff Herman, Public Safety and Justice Services. Uh, we are requesting uh, approval to award um, uh, to a vendor to provide a uh, body storage rack system for the medical examiner's office. Um, this project was competitively bid and we awarded to the lowest vendor. Um, this uh, storage system will increase uh, the body capacity by uh, 79 bodies from 105 to 184. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? Uh, hearing none, I will uh, make a motion to approve the item. Is there a second? Second. 
Second by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor of approval will indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The item is approved. Thank you. Next item is a two-part item, item number PC 2019-92, Department of Health and Human Services, on behalf of the Department of Development. A, submitting an RV exemption on requisition 44660, which will result in an award recommendation to Northern Ohio HR Conference in the amount not to exceed $2,420 for sponsorship and exhibitor booth space in connection with the Northern Ohio Human Resource Conference. Uh, and it's for the period... Uh, March 22nd, 2019. And B, recommending the award, I'm sorry, in, <laughs> in connection with said RP exemption. Good morning, David Feinerman, Department of Development. Uh, this will be the third year we are uh, attending the Northern Ohio HR Conference. This is uh, one of four or five conferences that we expect to uh, be at this year. Uh, and we've been at others uh, also in the past. This particular conference allows us to interact with more than 600 human resources professionals to offer our skill up services. Uh, this is funded by Health and Human Services Levy as all of our skill up opportunities are. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? Mr. McAleer. Administratively, why, why is it Department of Health and Human Services on behalf of the Department of Development? Yeah, so the Human Services Department is where we get all of our funding from, and so they are the ones that submit all scale-up items on our behalf uh, and also offer uh, support for uh, contractual purposes as well. Any other questions? Regarding this item? Seeing none, I will make a motion to approve the item. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Miller. All those in favor of approval indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The item is approved. Thank you. Next item is a two-part item, item BC 2019-93, Department of Health and Human Services, Office of Reentry. A, submitting an RFE exemption on requisition 41710, which will result in an award recommendation to the Securus Richard A. Smith Foundation in the amount not to exceed $46,000 for development of an online interactive going home to stay reentry resource and information guide. And it's for the period January 15, 2019 through December 31st, 2020 and be recommending the award in connection with said RFP exemption. Good morning. Fred Bolleton with the Office of Reentry. Uh, this project is an expansion. For the last 10 years, we have published a going home to stay resource guide for uh, reentering individuals. It has been available only in printed form and updated at most every two years. So information became outdated or new information obviously was not available to, uh, to, the, to these individuals. What we envision based on improvements in technology that make it cost effective, a, an interactive online resource guide which can be downloaded and printed either in part or in whole so people can, ha can have hard copies uh, without our printing costs but it will also give people access to real-time information it can be updated at any time with uh, information it will be used not only by people who have returned from incarceration but it will also be available easily to inmates to correctional and probational uh, officials to other governmental agencies and researchers who are doing um, research into reentry and its services uh, a question had come up of how this is not just the repetition or overlapping of other things that the county funds, such as 211 and um, the data banks from JSF and things like that. Um, also, North Star, who is funded through the Office of Reentry. This will be different, and there will be some overlap as the printed edition has been, but again, it will allow for constant updating of information which will then be used by places like the North Star Reentry Resource Center to provide that information. So they will actually be using this to provide that information. And it just, um, while some information as, as, as anything would be 
overlapping with other information. This gives much more um, flexibility and information. The pricing, this is, is uh, 23000 per year for the two-year period, which is basically for sub-licing of the software. We only na nationally identified one place that, that has this. The software licensing itself would be almost 10 times, I think more than 10 times the cost of this sub-licensing contract, and the vendor will provide in kind all of the services necessary, um, the development of the guide, training staff on how to update it, and uh, the, the funds are from the HHS levy have already been included in our biennial budget. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions? Councilman Miller. Will there, will there still be copies, hard copies of this printed and distributed from time to time? And, and if so, uh, will the cost of printing those copies come out of this contract or will that be separate? We don't anticipate printing ourselves any of these copies. It will be available to anyone online to print all or part of, of the guide. So there will be no other cost. Right now, the, the preparation and the printing costs uh, for the two-year period of, which, of the guides were approximately 35000 35 35-something. 35 so for the $10,000 over the two-year period, we are able to have a much more developed and, and up-to-date service. And do you expect that the primary people who would access this online and, uh, and use this would it be the uh, the reentry population itself, or or would it be uh, community agencies that work with the reentry population and and access this information and then provide it to their? It, it's expected it will, it will be both. Uh, the the greater greatest advantage is that uh, that. Inmates who are soon to be in the reentry population will have access to this, uh, as well as uh, providers of reentry services. But we expect a, a heavy use from the reentry population itself, as in, in addition to all those others. Any other questions, Mr. Magler? Fred, the backup says that this is the only vendor that applied. Did we do an RFP? This was, this was done through an informal RFP. Um, we had, before we actually issued the informal RFP, we did research to try and see who would be able to do that. Um, we, even, we approached the United Way, who has done the work for the Going Home to Stay Guide for the last 10 years. They are not. They didn't have the capabilities um, or interests to develop those to do so, and um, this was the only place that we identified. But we did send it out as an informal RFP as well. Uh, Nora Lockett, Office of Procurement and Diversity, and County Acceptable Informal RFP is only for purchases estimated to be less than twenty-five thousand dollars. Well, th uh, yeah, th Linda, thanks. That's where my concern was because I don't believe that this is the only vendor that can create an interactive guide. That's what, I mean, that's really what we're buying because we, we created the guide itself, correct? Right. We, well, there, there would be others, but not for this amount of money. Um, this, no one has ex expressed any desire capability and or desire to do so for this. Again, what we're basically doing is getting a sub-license for software that will enable to it and, and all the other services are being given in kind. Uh, we were not able to find anyone who had any as a interest, if, if ability, to do that for this cost. Fred, did we work with the IT department to try to find vendors that can do this, though? They were consulted. Okay. 
and they agree that this is the only vendor that can do it? I, I cannot say that for sure. I don't, I don't know what the ultimate conversation was, but I know that as a result of, of all that, it was decided that they should send it out as an informal RFP. So I, I would think that they agreed, but I don't want to speak for them because I do not have that specific information. Any other questions, comments? Uh, hearing none, I will make a motion to approve the item. Is there a second? No second. Mr. I, I'm just a little concerned. I, I'm, I guess I, I don't have a full understanding on the sub license that we're getting because I, I don't know what the license is for because I, I just believe that there are other vendors out there that can create interactive guides for us. And that's my concern about doing the RFP exemption. I, I can say that uh, we were working on this. This was the informal RFP went out in June. Uh, we had started with the design and plans for this uh, December of 17. Uh, and so, you know, we think we did dil due diligence in trying to locate other possible people um, or organizations who were willing to work within this, this budget. Um, you know, this was the, the foundation that uh, obviously is, is not doing it for profit and um, that's basically the, the reason. If we can find somebody else, especially if we could have found somebody local, we certainly would have had preference for, for that. Councilwoman Baker. Um, just for some clarification, we are sub-licensing the software from the Securus Richard A. Smith Foundation. So who has the original? License. That's the Secure Smith Foundation. And who are they? Who who in the county is licensing with them? That who who do they, they get it from? I do not know. That I do not know. But one of the things we had asked them is about, you know, what what is that doing for us that we couldn't just go out and get that? And they said that the license that they had was for it was over two hundred thousand a year. So. That didn't fit in with 23,000, <laughs> even if you drop the zero. <laughs> the question I have is, to what extent, if we go ahead with this, are we kind of committed on an ongoing basis once the two years are up, or, or, or does this not create any long-term commitment and, and we could easily at the end of two years perhaps even do a formal RFP and see if uh, see if other options are available. It's not a commitment past the two years. Um, a lot can happen in that time. We might be able to identify some other way of doing this or some other vendor or software may be available at a more reasonable cost that we could just purchase. Um, I wouldn't rule out continuing it if if none of those things happen, but there is no commitment past that time. And after seeing it and seeing the use, if we determine that it, while we think it would be was better to have this interactive online, if we find that it's not getting the same amount of interest and use, um, we probably consider doing something like going back to just print or or, or looking at, at other options at that point. Uh, I'm willing I'm willing to vote for this. If, if there's an understanding that uh, that we're not going to just wait until till the two years is almost up and scurry around to do something but but that we're going to going to monitor this on an ongoing basis and and uh, and w whatever we do the next time will be a, a more formal process that in, in which we've, uh, 
we've really done some good research to uh, determine what all the possibilities are and access them through whatever process we're doing. No, oh, be, we certainly would be open to that, especially since we have not dealt with this vendor and don't know if it would work out as we're expecting it would. So, yeah, we would work with both with the IT department and um, other outreach to try to see who else might be able to do it, especially if it is, as I say, if it's someone local, that, that would be uh, quite reasonable. Is there um, any way that this can be, is this a one year to renew for the second year or are we locked into two years? Um, we're asking to be approved for the, the two year agreement. It's the, the they say it's 20, I believe it's 23,000 for the sub license each year and they will I said, provide con ongoing training and um, the initial development of, of the whole thing. I understand that we're asking for two years, but do we have the option after one year to renew if, or not renew if we care not to? Or are we obligated by the company to stay two I years? I do not recall the language in the contract. Um, I believe it was for two years, but I believe most of our contracts do allow for us to um, get out of the contract, I would I would have to double check on the actual language of the contract unless anyone knows the actual language right now. Any other questions or comments? So we have a motion to approve. We did not get a second. Does everybody in the I'll second. Okay, seconded by Councilman Miller. All those in favor of approval, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the item is approved. You need to stay there. I need to ask you a question. A couple weeks ago, you were here and you had a, uh, for BC 2019-65 for a contract um, with design impact. Yes. And I had asked you the question, is any of, any of this contract uh, cover reimbursement of travel expenses? Because this company is in Cincinnati, and you said that that company was going to pay for their own travel expenses. Right. The actual contract has an exhibit where we have to reimburse them for travel expenses. Do you want to explain that? The actual contract. Exhibit two of the contract um, says the county agrees to reimburse design impact for travel for an amount not to exceed a thousand dollars. Right, and ed any additional travel, if I, I may have not made myself clear, the there was a maximum travel amount in there. They will probably exceed that. Right, but you said to the board that the company was going to pay their own travel expenses. Okay, That's if what I you misspoke, said. I do apologize. Um, all right, well, I mean, everybody that comes here needs to know what they're representing because I don't think it's fair to anybody on the board that um, things are not the way that they're conveyed no, no, during the meeting. That just, that, if I, if I a little more attention. I, 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 if, if I misspoke, I apologize. What I meant is that any additional travel, um, so I, I, I don't recall, but I certainly don't doubt that I may have misspoken at that, and I, I do apologize. Any additional travel not included in that contract is going to be provided in kind, and they will not be reimbursed for anything above that. So I'm sorry if I misrepresented or mis misspoke. Okay, just want to make everybody aware of that. Uh, one more item, please. Uh, Ms. Baker had raised about whether uh, whether we have the option to exit after uh, after one year. Could you go back and take a look at the contract and get back to us on that so that we know? Okay, thank you. Okay, so we can move to the next item, Madam Clerk. The next item, BC 2019-94, has been held at the request of the Law Department. 
Moving on to exemptions, item number BC 2019-95, Office of the Medical Examiner, recommending an alternative procurement process which will result in an award recommendation to ProMega and Life Technologies in the amount not to exceed $276,257 to procure genetic testing kits and other consumable supplies. And it's for the period January 1st, 2019 through December 31st, 2020. Hugh Shannon, Medical Examiner's Office. Uh, these are the basic kits used for the DNA lab. Um, it's uh, listed as alternative um, procurement and not sole source because technically uh, there are distributors for the manufacturer who do provide these kits, uh, but they can never beat the, the pricing that the original manufacturer does and which is we've learned over the years. Uh, so we go this route instead of sole source. But these are the kits that are required for the equipment. Are there any questions on the exemption request? Hearing none, I will make a motion to approve the item. Is there a second? Second by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor of approval indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The item is approved. We move on to the consent agenda. Consent agenda item numbers uh, BC 2019-96 through BC 2019-105. Okay, if everybody will take a moment to review those one last time. Does anybody have any questions about any of the items on the consent agenda? Councilwoman Baker? I was just curious at the amount um, for the dispose and save on SH 1944-350, 22, almost $23,000 seems high for gloves. I just wondered. Um, you know why it is that was such a high ticket item. That is the sheriff's department, the nitro gloves for food service workers in the jail. I don't believe there's anybody. We can find out more for you, councilwoman, and get back to you. That would be fine. It just seemed like a high number to at least ask. I'd appreciate an answer back. Any uh, other questions or comments? Um, I would just like to bring everybody's attention on, on 2019. Is it 97, Andrea? Uh, property disposal. 97. So th that company, I would make a recommendation that we look into acquiring another company for disposal. That company has had several instances where um, hard drives, not necessarily hard drives from the county, have not been completely wiped clean. Uh, they were involved um, to some extent um, to the, the Department of Corrections investigation uh, on a state basis uh, at a prison. And subsequently, there's been another one that's been brought to my attention about those items. Um, I, I just think we need to look at getting another company to do this so that we're sure that no <coughs> county hard drives contain any kind of information on that. So I don't know, Dennis, if you want to. Not in rebuttal at all, Dennis. Okay. Dennis Sullivan from uh, Department of IT. My knowledge of this is uh, back a while ago at one of their review meetings on a Wednesday, uh, Maggie had made a statement about a stereo outlet. And subsequently, I was told that the Inspector General, uh, IT security, I thought there was another entity. But anyway, those two had physically gone to an on-site visit and then did another unannounced on-site visit about the process of how RET3 handles things. 
<clears throat> then it's my understanding, and this is just what I know, it's my understanding that the stories and the background behind hard drives did not work, wiped totally clean in that. None of them came from any of the county sources. Any of the surplus turned over to that company. In fact, my understanding is RET3 had nothing to do with any of the pieces of equipment at all that went into that program didn't come from their source whatsoever, which would have been us ultimately, the source for them. So it wasn't a county, any, my understanding is it was never any county property. It was never processed through RET3 either. It was another entity in that program. Now Dennis, that's what I know. I yeah, don't know no, absolutely I am, everything. I'm, I'm just saying a couple of issues have been brought to my attention. One related to the corrections investigation mm -hmm. that was conducted by the state inspector general, and then another instance um, since we've been giving them the stuff since 2012, I mean, can't we just look for another company to do this? Agreed. Just in the no abundance of safety? I, you know, we don't want to be the third instance where something happens. So I, it's just, I'm just making a statement that maybe we should do that. Mr. Mack, we're perfectly fine. Do you know if we do an initial wipe? of the hard drives before we send it over there, or do we just send them over? My understanding is we do, yes. And then they also give us a certificate if anything is destroyed or, you know, because there was conversation, maybe you remember, Trevor, a couple of years ago, there was this conversation about taking hard drives all together yeah. and just destroying them ourselves on the county side. And then that really took away from any value to give it to another program. It was a big added expense to be able to redeploy them in some sort of a societal program. All right, maybe we can talk about that. I mean, that, that's that, like I said, I'm just making that statement that I think in the future and we might want to consider some alternatives. Absolutely open to further conversation. Okay, are there any other questions related? Thank you, Dennis, by the way. Uh, any other questions related to the consent agenda? Hearing none, I will make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented to the board. Um, is there a second? Second by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor of approval indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, the consent agenda is approved. Any other business? No other business at this time. Is there any other public comment? And no public comment. Okay, I will make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Is there a second? Second by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Any opposed? Uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you.